Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Angela. Um, today is the 4th of July. It's 11.30. Um, we're very overcast today, but there's no rain expected, so it's very cool, which is cool because it's been hotter than Hades lately. So, I didn't do it yesterday. Um, I spent all day cleaning because I was off yesterday for the holiday today, Saturday. So, I thought I would do it today before I go to my barbecue I've got going on tomorrow or later today and the fireworks. Um, so, we're back to reading chapter of Memoirs of a Birth Mother by me. Um, if you haven't checked this out, um, the first seven chapters are on my channel. Um, the book is also on sale on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's ebook only on Barnes and Noble, but you can get an actual copy on Amazon. So, yeah, we're up to chapter eight. So let's get into it. And let's see if I can make this a little dimmer. Okay. Chapter eight. They say giving birth is the most beautiful and natural experience anyone can have. I think it is one of the most grueling and painful experiences any one person can have. All the ripping, stretching, bleeding, screaming, it rivals any great horror movie. And yet, I did it three times. Nine months of your body changing in ways you never thought possible. The mood swings, the swelling of the feet, the weight gain. The achy boobs, the morning sickness, the weird food cravings, the only draw during these nine months, no period. If that wasn't enough to deal with you, if that wasn't enough to deal with, you now have to deal with the after effects of giving birth. The six week long period that seems to never end. The cramps, the hardness of your boobs, the gained weight turned fat that doesn't seem to want to leave you. You feel like a deflated balloon, an alien in your own body. Add to that, you now have a screaming infant to care for, always demanding your time, your energy, your life. It's around 2 a.m. You are severely sleep deprived. You haven't bathed in days. Hair is disheveled and you feel you may never have sex again due to the agonizing torture it's brought you when you think to yourself, why the hell would anyone do this more than once? Yet somehow in the middle of all this, you begin to weep over the loss, the loss of that feeling that you are part of something bigger than yourself. The loss of the wonderful miracle, miracle growing inside you. The excitement you feel over those first stirrings of butterflies in your tummy, signaling there is an actual life there. All the horrors, the, all the torture of those nine months fall by the wayside. Once you feel that first fluttering of movement. People say childbirth is the worst pain in the world and the easiest to forget. This is so true. You're yelling and screaming, cursing the doctors, nurses, even your spouse, anyone that will listen one minute and the next your maternal instincts kick in over the sound of those first hungry cries from your newborn. Everything and everyone, even the man to help create this life, just disappear as if they are nothing more than a mirage, a dream that once was. Nothing else matters but you and this tiny baby placed in your arms. The sheer joy of the moment overwhelms you so strongly you begin to cry from the happiness of it all pain forgotten. None of this was a factor with my first pregnancy. <clears throat> I was already in the process of giving my unborn daughter up for adoption and doing it all alone. It was the first of many things I would do by myself as an adult. I've al almost died from one thing or another in my life, yet giving birth and knowing I'm handing my child over to someone else to raise is still to date the scariest thing I've ever faced. It wasn't even about the whole process you go through during childbirth that scared me, although I wound up doing that too, alone. It was what came next. As long as I was pregnant, she was mine. However, when the universe decided to bring her into the world two weeks early, I was unprepared for the untimely separation. I now know I would have never been prepared to say goodbye. In my experience, you can never be prepared for something like this. I remember just a few days before I gave birth, I met her soon-to-be parents. They were kind and Catholic. Being raised a Pentecostal, I never understood the eternal forgiveness 
of the Catholic ways, but I was glad she would be raised knowing there is a God. I stood outside the room getting ready to leave my decision on the couple already made. When in, when in walked her father, asking what was taking me so long. Really? Suddenly, the adoption lady was there asking questions about who he was, if he was the father, so on and so on. It was one of the few times in my life I was left utterly speechless. It was a very awkward moment, the five of us standing there and all of them looking at me expectantly. I felt like an eternity as I had no idea what to say since he stood still wanting nothing to do with any of it. Before I could chime in and spill the beans on him, he stepped up and said, No, I'm not the father, I'm just a friend. As my heart sank, I was relieved at the same time. I knew two things in that moment. We would never be what I thought we were in the beginning of our relationship. And two, he was never going to be a father to his daughter. I remember the day she was born as if it were yesterday. The emotions I went through, the breaking of my heart. I can guarantee the doctor would could hear as I guarantee the doctor could hear as those first cries from my daughter rent the air, signaling she was here. I asked to hold her, and for a split second, I could see the doctors and nurses exchange a questioning glance before they placed her in my arms. It was instant love. It was as if we had the same heartbeat, and it was wonderful. She was the most beautiful baby I had ever seen. She literally took my breath away with how much I loved this tiny stranger. The tears began to pour down my cheeks as I stared fascinated by her beauty, holding her so delicately. She was my little angel sent from above. In that moment, I knew only peace and love. Time stopped. I could hear nothing, see nothing but her. Yet all too quickly that moment was over and reality set in. Just like a deafening blow, sound of the world came rushing back and I began to cry for very different reasons. My heart broke then and there and I knew it would never be whole again, as she now owned a piece of it. The adoption was like, unlike any adoption I'd ever heard about or seen on TV. It was an open adoption, and I got to set the perimeters of the adoption, which also determined how often I got pictures of her. There were linked options on how often I wanted pictures sent to me. I chose the shortest amount of time, so I would get them every 90 days. I wanted, no, needed, to see her as often as I could. Yet what I didn't know is this would become just as much of a challenge for me as actually giving her up had been. My heart broke every time I got a letter or a picture showcasing her progress. It was all just a blunt reminder that I had missed it all. For years, every letter and every picture I received, I cried over. I bawled and bawled until some nights I cried myself to sleep holding her picture, a picture that would become my lifeline in those first few years as I went through some very dark times. Thinking of all the options I had, I think giving her up was one of the hardest choices. But out of love for my child and wanting the best family I could provide for her was the one choice I could make as her mother. I did not want her growing up like I did, never knowing if you were truly loved and never having any had any opportunities. She is now in her 20s and has been asking questions about that time in my life. It was just as difficult then as much as it is now. She does deserve to know everything, and I want to provide her with the answers she deserves. However, once again, those long-forgotten, heartbreaking tears come to the surface. My heart is breaking all over again. The pain in my 19-year-old self could not even comprehend or endure, still causing untold pain after all these years. She's been asking so many questions of late, and as her birth mom, I do owe her that. I knew this day would come the moment I gave her up. Yet the day has seemed to sneak up on me unannounced, and so once again, I was unprepared, as if I could ever be prepared. I've been given a lot of flack over the years for giving her up, but I know in my heart of hearts it was still the right decision, even though my heart has been in a perpetual state of brokenness since that day. Let me set the record straight here. If you have any preconceived notions about birth moms, and you know who you are, not all of them are true. Just because someone gives their child up for adoption doesn't mean they don't love that child. I will always love her. She's a part of me. 
I just hope and pray she knows it too. That was the end of chapter eight. Um, it was kind of a short one. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button so you don't miss next week's chapter nine. Thanks.